Hello and welcome. This is going to be another Divine Partnership Coaching video. And thank you for your likes, shares, and subscribes. Um, I really appreciate them. Ah! And they add your <laughs> they add your energy to the, uh, the collective that I'm able to channel for. And then we're able to have a whole lot more fun with each other. Alright, now that that's out of the way. I want to, I'm going to try to talk about something, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm going to title it, and it's really feeling like it belongs in several of the series that I do, the, um, just in general, uh, relationship coaching, in the Divine Partnership Coaching series for Twin Flames, and in Manifesting Tips, and at least those starter ones, and what I want to talk about is something that I've learned that's been really powerful, um, not just in romantic relationships or with my twin flame, but in all situations, and that I see, well, it's not just new twin flames or people new to relationships that seem to have a challenge with this one, um, but it's, it seems to go around everywhere, and it's really, I'm noticing it's kind of a pro tip at this point that, um, well, it's not just divine feminines. Divine fems and masculines have learned to master, and it's a kind of a part of both faithfulness and um, using law of attraction and building better emotional security. And so here's the thing. When it comes to... See, this is where you run into trouble with it, but I just decided I'm just going to do it. So let's say that you're you're either in physical separation with your partner or you're in an actual like well I want to say like you're in actual separation like you live apart you're in separation you're on a break or you broke up or or you've just met them but they're still entangled with a karmic and you're not able to be together yet or it's just a simple like maybe you live together or you co-parent or things like that and you're more in a verbal separation like like they're you're not seeing as much of each other or things like that. Either way, in most situations like that, um, you're going to feel like you need some sort of um, confession or genuine apology or you, um, when they're ghosting you, like an explanation or when um, you want to know why they're acting so hot and cold or so weird or things like that. And you might find that uh, you know, ironically, the more you demand it and the more you want it, the l the less forthcoming they are about it. Or you may get just little bits and pieces. And what I see commonly, especially in some of the live chats, is a lot of people doing this. Well, my twin or my partner acted this way or that way, so I'm blocking them until they grow up or they, you know, do this and that. And I'm not, I'm not judging on that. I've been there and done that, but it really... it it's ineffective and it actually shows that you've still got a lot of triggers to work on and heal. And we, you know, we all have to go through this process. It's kind of more of a karmic reaction of like tit for tat sort of thing. Like, well, they acted in a way that I, that pulled me out of my high vibration and I'm mad about it. So they have to change and I'm not going to change until they change. And until they change, I'm going to punish them. You know, like it just, I mean, if somebody gets to get you to that point of upsetness, really, it shouldn't be tit for tat. It should be, okay, so this person is in another dimension and interacting with them is bringing me out of my alignment. So I'm going to go interact with those that are bringing me into alignment or I'm going to uh, surrender to some solo time and work on myself like that's that's a much more emotionally secure response and it's likely to get you further but actually what I've learned because it's hard it's hard especially if you've been in a dynamic um with a twin flame in particular, because there's a lot stronger connection there. They're not often the same as um, a soulmate or somebody else that you could just go, okay, yeah, I'm not playing with them anymore. Goodbye. Like spirit keeps bringing you back to them again and again. And this can, this stuff can also come up with family members, your parents, your children, things like that. And they keep coming and they keep coming until you're really just like, oh my gosh, like I'm enabling. I can't keep being so forgiving. I need to I, you know, or even just your heart just hurts. You really want that apology. 
or you really, you know, you want to hear a confession, um, either of their love or, um, their appreciation for you or a confession that they've been cheating. There's so many different things, like just some sort of confessional where you are informed of what the truth is and why they've been behaving the way they've been behaving, been behaving and acknowledgement of how they've treated you, things like that. Um, and, and, a an apology that really is meaningful, that comes with real change. It's not just pretty words. And in some cases, even that you need, you need forgiveness from somebody else. Now, all of those things, they're understandable to want, they're understandable to need. But if you go, if, if you look at it, in most cases, when you are holding it, it's not even a boundary at that point, it's a rule. Like you're saying, if they don't do this, I won't be happy. You know, which is like, don't give someone that much real estate in your head in the first place. Like if somebody's doing something that makes you unhappy, you can change what you are doing. You can, you can hang out by yourself. You can hang out with a friend. You can read a book. You can do all sorts of things that bring you happiness. Like why are you choosing to remain unhappy and focused on an issue that makes you unhappy when it makes you unhappy? Is it getting you anywhere? you know, and, and that's the way that the laws of the universe work. And, and part of it also is that if you feel like you need something, that's when you cannot have it. <laughs> you know, it is when you no longer need something that you have wanted greatly that you get it. And that's often why even, you know, if we've been waiting on a twin flame or just, you know, wanting an ex back, things like that, that they often do not come back until we no longer need them. And even in wanting them that we are not so over-focused on it that we're not doing other things because you get what you don't need. You get what you, you there's always an abundance of things you don't need. Haven't you ever noticed that? <laughs> and so when it comes to getting apologies and confessions and truth and uh, conversations that you want or acceptance, even adoration, that kind of stuff, the best thing that I found most effective is to get it in the 5D and learn to actually believe in and accept it. Like when there's an apology that I feel like I really need for my twin flame, I go into the 5D and I allow him to offer me that apology or to confess to me that truth. Now for me, it's usually visual. It's more of a clairvoyant sort of thing. So he might show me images or things like that. And Here's the funny thing. I mean, even if you want to drag it down to a really dry, logical, psychological type of thing, you're taking the pressure off of yourself and off of them. And that often makes it easier for someone else to be able to come in and apologize. Now, if you, if you like the magical spiritual law of attraction perspective, which is what I prefer, then you're actually, you're still removing the pressure. But once you are able to accept an apology in the 5D, you're, you're, removing that element of resistance we often add onto ourselves when we go, I'll just forget about it. Like, no, you're not really forgetting about it. You're compartmentalizing it. You're not actually doing anything about it. And you're allowing them to mistreat you. Now, if you accept an apology energetically that you feel like, you know, really came and is really there, then you're removing that and that weight and that burden on you goes away. You're no longer poisoning yourself with your own anger. And then guess what? usually then you get an actual apology or an actual confession or an, you know, an admission of adoration, whatever it is that you wanted. Now, the important thing though, is that if you're seeking an apology, then that usually means that you also feel like you need forgiveness for something. And so you need to give and receive forgiveness in that 5D space. Um, and likewise, if you want some sort of confession, it's likely that you need to make some sort of confession. So give and receive it in that 5D space and watch the magic happen. I've seen this happen in my own experience with family members, friends, my twin flame, uh, others. It, it really works once you believe that it works. Because remember, seeing isn't believing. Believing is seeing. If you'd like any help with this sort of tip or anything like that, you can check my 